Hello, everybody. Hello, Anna Greta. How are you doing today? Yeah, thank you. It's fine. The summer is back and the, the flies are humming, making noise, but everything is nice. How are you doing? I'm good also. We have a beautiful summer here in Geneva and uh, it's very hot weather. We have, um, the other day it went up to 33 degrees. Mm -hmm. But uh, luckily, we have the, the lake. We have we have Lake Geneva to go cool down. Oh, very nice. Yeah, hmm. nice. So we have a special okay. we have a, a yeah. special guest today, right? Right. And um, uh, we have today we have the first view. So this was a bit surprising. Uh, in our Facebook group, we asked the people who, who would you like to see? And that's the first ever. We have more names. We have John Lennon. We have Freddie Mercury. We have uh, uh, Louis Armstrong, etc., etc. So we asked Spirit to decide who would like to speak first, and it is the first human ever so i am um, all right contact him contacted him some days ago and yeah so his energy is here so wonderful so let's uh let him speak i'm excited we'll be uh, impressed with his english i'm sure shall, shall we start i, I I don't know, is it Adam or Eve, or is it a, a thing, uh, is it an alien, or who? <sighs> okay, okay. See you later at the end of the session. Earth, uh, earth beings, earth beings are listening right now uh, i was the first human ever so to speak i was the first incarnated spirit so to speak uh, you call me probably you call me adam the biblical adam there are other other nations calling me uh, pangu or pajama Oh, sorry, we can't bring it through that human being. There are several names, uh, several names in the mythology. I was the first human ever, but I was not the first being on Earth. I was not the first uh, living species with blood circulation. I was not the first being to breathe on this Earth planet. I was at that time uh, one of many, many species that got created from the non-physical realms. There was, there was an outburst of creation, an outburst of divine power to make this experiment on Earth, to create, create this beautiful planet. And before I was put in form, uh, many forms were tried out, many uh, living forms, many plants, uh, many energies, uh, visible and unvisible forms were tried. It was just a huge joy. It was a form of, you call it God mirroring himself, it was like that. But you, when you sit there and want to draw a painting and you have all those colors and a brush and a canvas, you, you have a similar outburst. You feel the wish to paint and you put it on the paper and often you don't have a conscious idea or a real precise idea what you are, you are painting. It's just an aus outburst of your creativity. And that is what happened with me as well. So creation is, creation is your birthright or creation is what you are in the image of God. I was created in the image of God and you are. And your uh, living 
mm. energy is creating. So always create something. That is when you are the most similar to God. That is when you are God. And when you are not creative, you cut off yourself from the living force. So I was outbursted onto this planet, but I was not uh, dumb like a Frankenstein's monster. You think I was running around like a robot or a, a, like a very uh, naive person without a brain. That was not like that. I had been in the non-physical world. I was kind of an astronaut. So I was, I was ready to try out this human form. I was ready to, to move into this vehicle, so to speak. So I was an intelligent force. I was not a, 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 a numb and dumb uh, thing made of mud. And I was also not made like a thing of mud. You might think God came down to the earth sitting down and uh, like a child in the, in the sand or playing in the mud and doing it like that. This is a bit too simple um, picture. I was um, sent into a um, collection of matter in, uh, in a focused, in a focused um, form, a focused, wow, Expression on, in words is not always easy. You know, the atomic and molecule um, collection that is sticking together, so to speak. And then God literally breathed, breathed me into this form. And my heart was going on. And I was feeling matter. So I was a prototype. <clears throat> a prototype and uh, as you know many prototypes have failures so when I started to move over the, the planet I was very irritated I had a time of uh, disorientation I, I knew which experiment I was going through and there were many many beyond be, behind the, the veil to see what am I doing and there were they were laughing to death when I made my first steps, but there was also a lot of joy, joy of creation. Um, the, the joy to create species was tremendous and a lot of energy forms uh, and spirits were doing this. And that's why the earth is so full of many different species uh, because the joy of creation was so immense. There's almost no planet where so many different forms of creation and this is all still from this first or a longer term of outburst of God's creativity. So when I was waking up in a physical body so to speak there was no heritage, there was no memory, there was nothing I could com compare this experiment to. Uh, using the eyes, using uh, feelings. Um, this was a big disorientation. I was like a baby put into a speed car and not knowing how to use the acceleration or the, the engine, the, the gas and all those, those functions. And as many prototypes have some difficulties so I had difficulties and uh, some difficulties were probably um, oversensitivity to sun activity or an oversensitivity to humidity um, all this had to be adjusted so before I moved in there were many models before me with more or less spirit I am just a degree of moving into a, a species or into a form. I'm only a degree. I'm not that Adam. But I can consider myself as the, the biggest step stone in bringing consciousness into such a human form, which existed before in, in lower uh, mindfulness. 
So I was stumbling around, intelligent, but not so mm, elegant. So in that way, you might consider myself as a Frankenstein from my first moves. Um, I had to deal with, with feelings. Uh, so if uh, uh, something like a frog or, or a, a rhinoceros came out of the woods, I felt ap apocalypse. So all, all this harmony between feelings and not feelings and, and, and interpreting sensations around me, that was all brand new to me. And some spirits were laughing to death when they, when they saw me. And there was a lot of laughter around creation. If somebody made a very strange fish or we, uh, some said, this, this fish you made is very ugly or very laughable and tried with forms, with eyes, with blood circulation, with skin. What, what can a skin do? Can it transpire? Can it uh, uh, exchange carbon? dioxide uh, can it react to sunlight there was a huge kind of chemistry lab behind the side or a physical labor laboratory on the other side to bring this through and a lot of joy and also a lot of um, excitement so i was definitely very excited when i was in this human form and and disconnected from other life forms, you could imagine if you are broken down to a single cell of your mind and split from all the other cells, it is as if you suddenly without arms and legs, you suddenly without your car, your computers, you are also disconnected from friends, you don't have your parties anymore, you don't have your family anymore, you are broken down in an awareness that splits you from everything and that was also frightening. I didn't know how is it to be frightened. And although I was prepared, the experience was spectacular, spectacular. And I still was connected with God. So when you read in your Bible that I was talking with God, that's true. So the God's voice was never disconnected from me. And also other species I could hear, but I was disoriented to feel them or to hear them, they all sounded so different. And then, wait a second. And then God saw that I was alone. Uh, and then he gave me Eve, the so-called Eve. <laughs> Well, this also had been prepared. This, this was not nothing that came in God's minds the moment that I was using my eyeballs. Uh, the second prototype or prototype XXL, uh, ABC, F, Y, Z um, was then in life with another species and it happened right in front of my nose that I could see this form like uh, probably you, you have seen it in uh, um, you can see something just popping up. In a way you are all a great pop-up picture from God. And so I saw her popping up and she was kind of a female, but believe me, that was absolutely not interesting for me in that moment. And believe me, when I saw Eve uh, with my um, not very used senses, uh, when I saw Eve at first time, believe me, there was no sexual feeling and there was no sexual attraction. I was just happy that I could uh, recognize recognize my old friend that um, that incarnated for the first time and we were kind of holding hands that sounds like romantic and idyllic but it was for us a form of connection so touching the hands was uh, easier for us than to change connection and to to talk 
non-verbal and getting the sensation of the other body. So she was astronaut like me. Uh, and it was not about a romantic love affair, I, I can tell you. I was just really happy that somebody else did this experiment with me. So over the time uh, and over the many, many mythologies that were crea created around this species, I must tell you that even this unique experience to be um, one one of your ancestor, 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 ancestors, or the original ancestors, there was a lot of life going on on this planet, on other planets. And some beings are, in your understanding, eternal. Uh, humanoid forms on other planets, life existence, they are beyond your concept of time and realm. Compared to other alien uh, forms, we were a little bit more uh, on this Earth planet, more like, uh, I don't want to say monkeys, I don't want to refer to this less civilized form, or I don't want to refer to a more animal-like form. We were from the beginning conscious beings. We were intelligent beings making an experiment. Yet we looked a little bit uh, more like those animal forms, more monkey than human, as you understand it today. There were um, some of us or came after us who have less or more or less hair or more or less strong chin. And our senses were more animal-like. We could smell and hear way better than you do today. So there were mixed forms. We were in your imagination of that beautiful as you are today with all your makeup, with all your hairless skin, with all your artificial brown skin, with all your yeah, hairdressers, etc. We were quite original types. We did not look like all your oil paintings in the cathedrals. We looked more like this picture that you chose in the beginning of this video. <clears throat> and we were uh, in, in Africa, mm, in the Garden Eden, and still Africa has the essence of the Garden Eden, the eternal paradise. Some uh, were asking if we are not extraterrestrials landed here on the ships, if we were not uh, just... Um, a species that came from other planets. You will find those other planet species as well. They just came as an escape from other planets and they had their influence onto this planet and um, there are contacts non-stop going on with extraterrestrial beings. What I am uh, can say about myself, the original Adam, I was indeed um, created. I was not like you're, you're, you're have this discussion about Darwin, is there evolution, is there no evolution, was there a point that God said, now I put a um, human being on this planet um, after my image. Well, I can say, as it was in my case, in my case, it was an idea from the non-physical realms to make a jump uh, and, and put a bit more mind in such a species on this planet. And I declared myself to do this experiment like, yeah, I'm using again the picture of the astronaut, the astronaut uh, that declared himself to be the first man on the moon. Um, and I did this with this Earth planet. And this is only a little puzzle piece, a piece of all what happens during all the universes and galaxies. This is only a small puzzle piece. 
and it fits in your concept of linear time. Well, as I'm something like your grand, 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 grandfather, what do we have in common? Or what could I tell you about you being today? What do we have in common? Well, still you are intelligent beings and still you are pieces of cells of God's big, big, big brain you will never understand. Still we have in common a discovery and still we have in common a disorientation. You still don't don't grasp the whole picture of the universe or of this life beyond uh, this this way. You still are uh, a little cell in the big, big brain of God and still you are disoriented like I was disoriented. Now you have more inherited, you have had all your incarnations, you have had teachers, you have had parents. I didn't have parents. I had to uh, run around a little bit uh, numb and dumb um, with trying to use this body. So you have a little bit an advantage to me, but still you have um, a limited understanding of who you are. Still you are in cages of what you understand and not understand. And this is a time if we talk about evolutionary jumps. I made the step of an evolutionary jump and you are going to make an evolutionary jump as well. Because you are now on the edge of a new time where you um, will reunite with other brain cells of God, so to speak. Your memory of who you really are will become bigger and you will... Um, break some boundaries of your understanding and comprehension. So in a way, I'm, uh, I'm happy to see your jump as well. I am an internal uh, consciousness like you are. I'm free of my limits um, now. And I know how painful it was to go into this restricted awareness. And now you might have some birth pain to get into a broader awareness, but this is possible for you. And I would love you to, to read again all the teachings that teach you how to get free from the chains of your consciousness. That will benefit you tremendously. There is so much more available to you, so much more understanding, so much more to see and to look, so much more to, uh, to bring in your daily life. So it is is almost ridiculous under which conce concepts or um, restrictions you are living right now. So do all of those um, exercises, starting with the meditation and starting with your ancient teachings and starting with learning the Buddhist and the Hinduist ceremonies to overcome flesh and blood. Uh, every shaman knows those teachings. There are so much teachers on your world and just exercises to break the chains and you will feel so much better and then you are the next evolutionary step. This is for us all as exciting and as exciting it was to do the first creation on this planet in the paradise. Uh, so exciting it is to see you breaking the chains again and a little bit coming back from the restriction to a little bit more paradise on this planet. <clears throat> I hope I don't talk too much. I'm not used to speak through medium and I was not asked in that kind before. If you want to ask the first alien on this planet, this is possible as well. I refer to a very humanoid form uh, made for this planet Earth. Uh, Eve is here as well and tells you her greetings and tells you that she didn't look like you look today. And if, if you could see her today or if you would have her body, you would immediately start to do uh, shavings and plastic surgery and all this kind. Uh, 
And she tells you, please um, accept your bodies as they are. They are created in the image of God. Um, so please see the beauty in what you have and don't make it ugly. From our point of view, all you with your plastic surgeries and all your shavings and all your um, manipulating of who you were or what body you chose, in our perspective, you are making yourselves ugly. But even there are new trends on this planet and we like to see that. Stop the body shaming. If you could see your ancestors, you would uh, change your mind. <laughs> okay, my dears, that's probably all I have to say today. Be creative then you will have the most joy joy you will have the most living force in your cells and you are connected with your deepest god's god's force do those things that you don't have a plan for just a feeling and act it out, out then you have your most original god's force that you bring through Enjoy this lifetime. It's a huge experiment. It's a huge uh, joy. It's, a, it's appreciation. Learn to appreciate again. Appreciate with every cell you have, everything you see and discover. It's all for the good. It's all for the good. And now I bend my knee towards you who made it so far. God bless you while you are doing a your evolutionary step stone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Adam. <laughs> Thank you for coming through. Hi. You're back, Miguel. You are back. Yeah, I'm back. Well done. So should 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 yeah. How did it feel? Oops, oh, never sure. Did 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 it feel what? did it feel quite different for you? Did you feel something special? Um, in the beginning, I feel the strongest energy of the oh, oh, coming like, like out of the ground. And then it gets more and more aligned with my energy. Yes, they all have a different energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I was going to. Yeah. I was going to ask how long ago, you know. Wait a second, Mate. I was going to ask how long ago it was that uh, Adam was on the Earth. Three point five. I have no bullshit. I'm talking 3.5 million years. Mm -hmm. 3.5 million years. I don't know. 3.5 million years. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. But you know what? I'm not good in numbers. So uh, somebody else wants to talk. So that was not planned, but. Okay. They okay, uh, they're, sh uh, they're shutting me down. <clears throat> Here I am, and I'm the one you call Jesus. I want to speak from time to time. You are searching the right version of um, broadcasting this program. We had a show where I always used to talk, and now, um we have a simple YouTube form to break it into pieces, but I'm still there. And I want to encourage you, my dears, I want to encourage you in this special time uh, that you um, don't be afraid. Seemingly it is quite chaotic. Seemingly there's still this virus in action. Seemingly people losing their jobs. Seemingly, you cannot travel as you used before. And some think this is a bad sign for 
um, uh, for a civilization breaking down or whatever you think or interpret this. But let me tell you, all life is eternally and it sometimes just makes a turn. Sometimes it goes over sticks and stones. Sometimes your life seems to be upside down. But you know what? This upside down, this losing everything can make you questioning who are you really and what do you have when everything is gone? When you lose the money and the food and uh, your boyfriend is running away and you're losing your teeth and your hair, you seemingly to lose everything. You still have yourself and you yourself are the world to you. You never lose your world. You never use your eternal soul. And for your soul, it might be a great experience, a great adventure what you're going through. Don't be afraid. This experience that you have now, now in your, um, in your daily life or in your world, but that seems like the going down of the civilization is probably a necessary step to rattle all, all wrong pers perspective, perspective, all wrong um, cages, rattling them. Uh, perception we want to say we're rattling all this so that you question everything you had yesterday and you are falling back on your true self your soul your internal your uh, eternal being that is the world to you and only in yourself only in yourself you can create or find back who you really are and everything is possible to you. Still, if you can't find what you need in the outside world, you must look it in the inside world. And this is a time for going inwards. A few letters later, you will see, oh Lord, what have we done? And you will telling your grandson that at that time, in that time of the coronavirus, what did I, you and your grandmother, we were running away and did a picnic under a tree and we had the time of our life. Your grandmother and me were discovering what makes us really happy and many things we did not need and we were recreating ourselves. And you will tell, you will speak like your grandfather said, oh, we had nothing, but we were happy and we helped each other. And we had such a good relationship in our village with our neighbors because we helped each other. You will find your most precious gifts in that. And for your eternal soul, it is just an interesting experiment that the soul hates when everything goes as it was always, you work day and night, then you go on holiday, then you buy a new car, then you give birth to your children and they work their whole life and then they buy a new car and then they go on holiday. This is so boring for your souls and you learn nothing. From time to time, everything has to be rattled a little bit. And so you learn and you free yourself from all the things you don't really need. And you learn to find your joy in yourself and you learn how to create abundance from nothing. Abundance from a corn of sand. This is all available to you, all available. And illusions have to be questions from, questioned from time to time. See what works in your life. See what makes you happy. You are not in danger. You think you are in danger. No, you are not. You are cared for from many, many souls. You are cared for from the eternal realms. You are cared for from your angels, from your beloved friends on the other side. There's always comfort for you. There's always help for you. There's always caring for you. 
you never get lost. Fear nothing. Don't fear. Fear not. I am the one you call Jesus. And I want to know that everything is perfect, even in your life, even in yours. And if you still get back into fear, call my name and I will always be with you, always, always, until the end of your time. Yeah, surprise. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, do you hear me? Am I alone in the space? Jesus is with me <laughs> and Matei. And the viewers also, with awesome. all the viewers. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. oh, I'm really glad he came yeah. through. That was very wise words. It's, I, I always like to hear that everything is always okay, you know. We tend to worry so much and we, I at least to criticize myself for this and that and I'm not good enough and blah, blah. But everything is happening the way it should oh. and um, that's very reassuring. I like that. Yeah. I liked, you know what, I liked Eve. That she says we are always doing classics surgery and think actually it's not right, the ear is not right, the nose is not right, the king is not right. And if we, we compare ourselves to original Eve, we would go immediately to plastic surgery. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. she must have looked quite different all that yeah. time ago. All right, and I guess, well, thank you so much for the channeling of the first human being and of Jesus. Thank you. Yeah. We can remind our viewers that you can book a channeling session with Anna Greta. If you would like to have a stool with me. Exactly. Hello? You can um, go on to... Technical difficulty. You can go on to the website, Spirits of Anna Greta, and you can book a session there if you want. You will see it's a fantastic experience. Unforgettable. So, Anna Greta, I wish you a very nice evening and for our viewers as well. Okay. And we will see okay. you very soon. Yeah. Yeah, have a nice meditation. Thank week. you, thank you. And I hope that many people follow your example, going to seminars for meditation and bigger awareness. And may God's blessing crawl through all the cells of your bodies. Have a wonderful time, dear viewers. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.